All right, what's up guys? I'm gonna finish up arrays and then I'm gonna go into some looping action and then I'll probably call it a day for this video. All right, so before I was always going into defining an empty list and then appending it, appending values to it, but pre-allocating an array is almost always faster. Actually, it's, it's always faster. I don't think there is a case where it's not faster. So if you know the size of what you're going to be working with, then it's better to just define a empty or define an array of zeros or an array of ones or something like that and work with that. Let's say we know our size and work with 10 elements and then define it like that. But because that's already defined, now we can just go into it and edit the values rather than having to append a new value. And little reasoning why is when you're making an empty list every time you have to add a new value depending on how the architecture of the code is set up it has to either make a whole new container when it appends a new value or sometimes it like copies all the values over to, to make this new list that's one size bigger and it involves a lot more computation and that's usually how the architecture is set up I don't quite know for Julia, but I know that for Julia, pre-allocating is faster, and for many other languages, pre-allocating is faster. Okay, moving on from there. The last two I want to go into are the step range and the unit range. Okay, so the step range is, you use a value called range, or a function called range, and you define the start, the stop, and then the length. So what this is doing is we're going to go from 1 to 20. And then between 1 to 20, there's going to be 10, 10 breaks. Or 10, it'll be 10 units from 1 to 20. And then I can find my unit range, which is going to be kind of similar, but you're going to say I'm going to use colons instead. It'll be 1, and then I'm going to say 2. 20. Okay, so range is going from 1 to 20 and it's going to break up into 10 units across 20. While this is saying I'm going to go 1 to 20 and I'm going to take two steps every single time. So they're slightly different and they're, they're used for different cases. You would use range when you know you want you want to go from 100 to 1,000, and you want it for 100 steps. So then you, you would give it a size of 100, and it breaks up accordingly. While unit range, let's say you want to go 1, one to 2, but then you want it broken really finitely. So you want to take a step of 0 0.005. That's this really finite set between them. I'm going to do a printout of these and you're gonna see that these are also printed out slightly differently of than arrays so it prints ln of r and then i'm going to do type of r and then i have to put a space ln u and type of u Okay, and then these aren't going to do anything. I just, just wanted to show the pre-allocation. Okay, and then call the file. All right, so going back again, you can see you can see that they're they're defined in a similar fashion. This is going from one twenty, and then because this is a range, it's going to do the step range. That's that's what it's called here: a step range length len and defines everything else inside of it and it's based off a float and it's twice precision and it's saying here that each step is going to 0.11 and we're going to take steps until 20. And this is broken up in a fashion where there's 10, it's a length of 10. You can do that to show one more thing and to show another function. Let's see, I'm making a new line actually. Print size of r1. So this is going to get the size of the container. In this case, I'm giving it the range. 
and then this is saying what dimension I want. So this is going to take the the column dimension first, and let's say if we had a multi-dimensional array, if I gave it two, then it would do the row dimension. If I left it blank, then it will put the entire size of row, column, and you know if you had a third dimension, that uh, depth. I'm going to do a print ln size of u1. And actually, this one I'm going to leave without the comma so you can see that's going to output the entire, entire size. OK. All right, once again, so this is the range here. It's going from 1 to 20, taking a step of 2.1, and it's the size of 10. Now, this one is going from 1 to 19, taking two steps every single time. And you can see here, this is the size again that I was talking about. But because I didn't give it a 1 or a 2 or anything, I didn't specify that I wanted just one, one dimension, this is giving me the entire container. So if I had a larger subset, let's say I had zeros, 3, comma, 4, and I did size of z, oh, I should put that in a print statement. Otherwise, we're not going to see anything. Oopsie. Okay. Okay, and then you can see for zeros because I didn't give it a number, it, it told me the entire size, which then I can work with that too. But uh, if you know you want the column or you want the row, then you can just give it this parameter and it will pull out the value you want. Okay, so one more thing I want to go into or at these different arrays is list comprehension. And if you're coming from Python, you already know what this is. So list one equals x for x in one to 20. Now let's go into what this is saying. x for x in 20. So this is a for loop, and this x is in the range from one to 20. And then I'm saying just output x. So for each element, I'm going to output this range. And I'm going to take off this print statement here. Print ln ln1. And we're going to see ln1 here. OK, and you can see it goes all the way. So 1, 2, 3, all the way to 20. And it just outputs that. So it's a nice way to set up a list if you already know the pattern to it say you don't want zeros you want ones maybe you want evens or you want you want odds or you there's some pattern to it and you know you can define it easily let's say we wanted a list set up where it was even for the range given in one to 20. all right and i just realized i put a minus there All right, and you can see here it's going one zero one zero one zero one zero and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is another operator. It's called the remainder operator, and in other languages called the modulus. And then you can see this is changing back and forth, going from one to twenty. The so one is odd. Zero is when it's the remainder is zero, so that means this is an even, and so on and so forth, and, and it prints it out. Okay. Now, one, this is more of a visualizing technique, but I use println a lot. But let's say we're printing out our, our z over there. We print that out. Okay. This is kind of hard to weird to read. It's, uh, you can see that it is a multi dimensional array because of these semicolons, that means that's the end of the line, and this is actually the, the next the next row, and this is the next row. But this is kind of annoying to read whenever you're looking at multi-dimensional. Multi so another way to look at these 
is rather than using prints, use display. And now if you use this command, it's also going to give you some more information. It says, okay, this is a 3 by 4 it's a ray, it's a float, and then it, it sets it up in a fashion where it's a lot easier to read. You don't always need display. Sometimes print is enough, but display is good if you're looking at arrays that are larger, more complex, and it can, can output some more stuff for you.